Hey guys, this is Heretic and it's Sunday, September 5th, 2021. And in this video, I'm gonna go over how you can build a successful alliance or a guild in any game. But before we get started, if you're a fan of gaming and would like to see more content like this, smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and click the notification bell Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. My goal with this video is that you'll be able to take and use at least one thing from this video in your alliance and help it grow or become more successful. I've been leading alliances and guilds and clans for many different games for the past 15 years, if not longer. I have led alliances in Warhammer Online, World of Warcraft, Star Wars Galaxies, and several other games along the way before moving to online mobile games where I help lead an alliance in King of Avalon. Leading groups is something I love to do. One of the things that's similar to teams in your professional or sporting or any other type of group activity and gaming is that while everyone is a little bit different, everyone likes to see growth and be a part of a winning atmosphere. No one wants to be part of a team in decline or a team that's considered poorly managed. Building a winning atmosphere is extremely important, no matter the circumstances that you're currently facing. So let's get started with some specific points about leading a gaming alliance or clan or guild. Number one, you need to know the game. If you're new to the game, the features or the mechanics, it will be nearly impossible to get people to actually follow you. Learn about the game, even new games, by reading the developer's website, watching YouTube, and by participating in beta programs if you can. Number two, have a vision for what you want in an alliance or a guild. Is it going to be hardcore? Is it going to be casual? Is it going to be middle range? Do you plan to dominate your kingdom or your server or the game at large? Or what facet of the game do you want to excel at as an alliance? This concept of your alliance's mission statement is critical in making every other decision going forward. It is your guide that you will use as long as you have your alliance. For example, I started CRE Core because the previous alliance I was in was too casual and unorganized, and that's kind of the way that that alliance was built. No one really followed directions, and the other leaders were, at that point, mostly checked out. So CRE was a way for me to actually start from the beginning, building the right culture and the alliance that would be organized and always competing. Number three, start small and build a core before expanding too much. So to keep your alliance the way that you want it, to keep your vision going, if you grow too fast, you're, you can lose that vision because it'll be too much to manage. Unless you already have a huge following or a group of friends in the game that you already know before you get started, expect and appreciate that starting small and building up and becoming something great by starting at the bottom is, is a good feeling. Pick up the right people along the way, not just anyone. Pick up people that are going to help you achieve that vision for the alliance that you set out with. All right, number four. Find and use a communication tool like Discord, Line, WhatsApp, WeChat, whatever it is that works for your alliance. I chose Discord, Discord uh, because we depend on translators as we have an international alliance, people from all over the world, and the translation bots are somewhat good. They're not perfect, but they're somewhat good. We do use voice chat at times in Discord for the English players as well, and any, any other languages, they can have their own voice chats as well. Number five. This is super important. Have good leaders with you. You can't do it alone, not for very long. If at all possible, identify 
good leaders who will help you build the alliance with you from the very beginning, who have that same vision of an alliance that you have. Number six, know your strengths and your weaknesses and find leaders that can make up for the areas where you not may not be that strong. Don't be afraid to even let others do the things you're great at. You can help guide them and let them do something they really enjoy, even if you're good at that. Number seven, the guild, alliance, clan, whatever, is not about you. They are more important. That vision of that alliance, that guild, that clan is more important than just one person, even if it's you, the person that started it. So listen, Michael, your branch has been doing great lately, and your sales staff is reporting very strong numbers. Outperforming last year, in fact. Um, and I don't know exactly how to put this, but what are you doing right? Stick to your vision, your mission statement, but don't get in the way otherwise. It's not about just about you. Build rules for your alliance that guides them towards the alliance vision, keeping in mind that everybody plays to have fun and, and not to log in and then work or get yelled at or you know be treated like a child. Number eight, stay organized and active and participate in events, you personally. Be on when your alliance, your guild is on. At the same time that your alliance is active, you need to be active. Organize events that fit with their schedule. Do your homework before you make attempts. Be someone your members and other leaders depend on. When a new event is coming to the game or the event is new um, to me, I will ask on forums, I will ask people I know that I respect in the game. I'll watch multiple videos. I'll watch other alliances make attempts, etc. And then I'll use that to build our plan. Number nine, this is super important as well. Stop drama before it consumes you and the guild. No. Monsters. Don't start this. Pull that band-aid off. Don't wait and hope things will get better, you know, later. Stop it quickly. Drama sucks the life out of groups. I've seen drama that just made me log off the game and just stop playing completely. I, like most people, want to enjoy my time in the game and trauma is evil. If two people are fighting, pull them into a private room and help them work it out. As a last resort, you know, one or both of them may need to go, but you need to make that attempt or you need someone, one of your leaders, that will make that attempt to work things out, to get through that drama, to not let it escalate and not make it visible to your other members. The worst thing that you can do is to completely ignore it. Number 10, motivate players. If your goal is for the Alliance to be the best at something, give your members a way to be where you want them and help them along the way. Simple motivation and encouragement can go a long way. Celebrate success and learn from the setbacks. So one of the ideas here is have a push program. Help people that are you know far back behind the pack and help people that are towards the front as well. So you're helping kind of everybody grow and get to where you want them to be. Another thing you can do is when you lose an event or where you don't achieve what you should have or some mistakes were made, instead of 
yelling and getting angry, pull those people aside for everybody together and just say, hey, listen, these are these are some of the things that happened that we could probably do better next time. And a lot, most of the time, it's going to be your fault as a leader anyway. So go ahead and accept that fault. You know, say that, you know, I should have told you guys before we started or should have made it more clear that when we do this, this is kind of what we expect. And this is how we're going to win. This is how we're going to divide up our groups and break into smaller teams, which is something you must do, which I'm not going to list here as a number. But as a strategy, break down the big plan into small plans and then assign people to those small plans and that's how you'll do a lot better. It's a lot easier to think of it that way. So if you're in a battle, for example, and you have to attack multiple fronts, instead of telling people attack multiple fronts, divide up your group into teams that can take each one of those fronts and assign each one a leader and let them go have fun and achieve success. So as you can tell, this is a subject that I'm very passionate about. I love leading teams and I love watching teams achieve success. If you have any stories or feedback for me or things that you've done in an alliance or that you've seen done in an alliance that has been successful, leave some comments below the video. And if this is something that you're also very interested in and you'd like to talk more, let me know and like the video and subscribe. All right, take care.